We're doing a leak and flow test on a 3 lumen catheter. The leak test is done at 50 psi plus and minus 2.5 psi. We are testing, we're filling for 0.3, settling for 0.3, testing for 0.3, and we're looking for a maximum decay of 0.05. That's just a number we've set. It, it will change later on. The next test that we do, well, the other test we do is a flow test done at 1.5 psi plus and minus 0.5. We're, filling, we're testing for one second. We've set a minimum flow of, of zero and a maximum flow of 1,000. We start on the flow tests. We will do three flow tests, one for each lumen. And then I will occlude the part with a set of forceps. And then it will do the leak tests, and we'll go to that point. So it completed all three tests. If, we'll show on the screen the results of those tests. The first Lumen 1 flow was a pass. We recorded 573 cc's. Lumen 2 was a pass. We recorded 765 cc's. Lumen 3, again, was a pass, and we recorded 581 cc's. And then we moved to the Lumen 1 leak, was a pass with a decay of 0 0.0305. Lumen 2 leak passed with a 0.0178, and lumen 3, again, passed with a 0.0282 leak. I've configured the tester to be able to introduce a 5 cc per minute leak rate to lumen 3, so we'll go ahead and we'll run that sequence of tests again with the leak in it. So I'm going to go ahead and I will start the flow tests again, so it will redo the three flow tests in sequence. Now it's doing the leak tests. We're going to record a failure on channel 3, and if we go back over to the computer screen, we'll see that we got 576 on the, the flow test on Lumen 1, 766, 583 on Lumen 3, then we had a 0411 leak on Lumen 1, 0173 leak on Lumen 2, and then we did get a leak failure on lumen 3 with a 0.102 decay, and that is at 5 cc's per minute.